Placing rear pads on a BMW X3. Make sure to use brake paste on the back and contact surfaces. Now, there's a few things you have to keep in mind when doing brake pads. My fluid reservoir is to the max position, so when I compress the brake caliper piston, my fluid level is going to rise. So I have to keep an eye on this to make sure it does not reach the top where it's going to actually overflow from the reservoir. So I'll probably end up sucking some of this out and then topping off when I'm done. Now the rotors on this are in good shape. This is the brake caliper and you have these plastic covers that hold the caliper bracket in place, or the caliper in place rather. But if you notice there's not much room here for me to actually get in with a ratchet. And if I start unscrewing, I'm going to be hitting uh, the shock. So, there's a neat trick that I like to do is to use, let's see, this is a 6 millimeter, I believe. Let's see, nope, 8, eight millimeter on my Allen. And now I can use that to remove the slider. So I broke it free this way, and once it's loose, they usually come out pretty easily. Okay, there's my top slider. Take the cap off the bottom do the same thing. On the bottom I can go ahead and use a ratchet. It makes things a lot easier. And slide that out. Okay, here's my clip. Just have to pry like this to release it. You can see where it's held in, in tension on those two uh, holes on the caliper. Just give it a lift, pop that off. Usually once the spring tension is off, you can finagle these off. I'm just going to push back on the pad a little bit with a screwdriver in between the pad and the rotor, just enough to loosen everything up. Walk that free. There we go. Just going to use a wire brush and just hit the contact points. Remove the residual brake dust. I'm going to clean these points a little bit. Okay. And you can see where the caliper is actually resting because there's a little mark so it's actually I like to put a little bit of uh, the anti-seize on those marks and you also want to make sure to lubricate these sliders 
just with the same brake paste. Okay, pop these off. These are the new pads. And first thing you need to do before installing these, you inspect the caliper. This is where you could put your brake paste, but since I put on the backing plate, I'm already good. You don't want to get any brake paste on this boot. That's why I don't like to put it here. And these sliders need to be back. Make sure that they move well. I've lubricated them as you can see right there. And now I'm going to I'm going to use just a large pair of vice grips and compress that. And I have to make sure to watch the fluid level inside my uh, brake reservoir. You want to compress it all the way. Double check. Yeah, my fluid level still good. Just raised a little bit. This one pops on first. Like so. Make sure to keep the brake surface nice and clean. You don't want to get any oil on this if you do the pads actually need to be replaced you can't clean them the second one actually it's better just to rest it right onto the caliper bracket and then you take the whole caliper and slide it over the top push my sliders into place and then I'm going to tighten those down. These are snug, but you don't want to over tighten. I'll have to list a uh, specification for you for tightening torques. Once those are tightened down, don't forget to put the caps over the top. And then my last piece is my spring, retaining spring. You line it up on the bottom and the top. And if you push it on, most of the time, you can get this to catch, like so. See that bottom one's not quite on. If you take something, give it a good hit, it'll pop right on. There we go. And uh, repeat for the other side. Make sure to keep an eye on that brake fluid level. Uh, before driving away, make sure to pump the brakes a couple of times after you start, which is going to uh, compress the piston and uh, allow that air gap to, uh, to go away. And then uh, make sure to drive the vehicle with caution for a short time until the brakes actually break in. Thanks for watching. You can see where the sensor's just starting to touch against the rotor. Now to replace the sensor, which is on the passenger side, it's routed under here. Pop that off. These actually twist to unlock. They twist and lift. It runs along here. Twist. To unlock it, just push it to the side. You have to go all the way up, which runs under this piece here. 
which has a push clip, which I removed, which is right there, and two eight millimeters, one and two. And here's the cover, or the box rather, where that goes to. This clips up top. That opens up. The blue one is your wheel speed sensor. The black one, bottom one in this case, is my brake sensor. There's two tabs on each side. Just press the tabs and separate this. Actually, only one tab. Like so. And then there's another clip under here, another one of those twist clips. And the whole thing. Just comes off. And that's how you're going to route your new one. Right along there. Plug it in. Put your cover back on. And then uh, also see my other video for resetting the brake service light. You can see how much more space I have between the sensor and the pad. So that just pushes in. It's held on by a retaining clip over here. Come up to the top. I clip that on. And then follow it down. And if you notice, there's these gaps. And that's where these actually sit. And just push them back down. You don't have to worry about twisting them. That's just to release them. Just give them a push down and they lock in. And then route it up to that back corner. And uh, plug everything in. Put your cover back on and you're good to go.